friends, it's Miss Christina. Welcome to our final video in our six week series, The Gospel God's Plan for Me. I can't even believe that it's been a whole six weeks, but we did it. We made it to our final video. This week, we're going to review all the things that we've learned in the past few weeks, and we're going to play two games, and then we're going to talk about what happens after you become a Christian. So make sure that you've got those activity books with you, and let's get started. All right, friends, we've been saying this for the past five weeks. The gospel is the what? It's the good news. The gospel is the message God gives us in the Bible about his son, Jesus, the kingdom of God, and salvation. And so, like I said, we're going to play two games today. And so in order to play those two games, I need you to do something. I need you to go find five pieces of paper. And on each one of those sheets of paper, I want you to write one of the different parts of the gospel. So I felt like coloring today, and I did this activity as well. So it's going to look something like this. On the first one, I drew a crown and wrote God rules. The second one, I drew a big red X and I wrote we sinned. On the third one, I drew a cross and wrote God provided. On the next one, I, do, I drew a pretty present and I said Jesus gives. And finally, I drew some hands up in the air and said we respond. So your paper could look like that. Or you could even keep it really simple and you could do something like this, where you just write the words on a sticky note, God rules, we sinned, God provided, Jesus gives, and we respond. All right, friends, so in a couple seconds, I want you to pause this video and you're going to go find those five sheets of paper and on each one, write the different parts of the gospel and do some coloring if you want. When you're all done, I want you to come back to this video and hit play and we'll move on to our game. All right, friends, do you have your five sheets of paper with your five different parts of the gospel? If you do, the first thing that I want you to do is to shuffle them. So just shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Keep shuffling until I say stop shuffling. We're going to shuffle, 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 shuffle. You got to make a song to make everything fun, right? Shuffle, 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 shuffle. Are you almost done and done? Okay, so all of your cards should be shuffled. Now that your cards are shuffled, let me tell you the rules of our game. Since your cards are shuffled, they are all in the wrong order. And so we got to get the gospel back in the correct order. So I'm going to give you 10 seconds to unshuffle your cards, to lay them down on the table or on the floor in front of you in the correct order. So you got to remember, think back to all the videos that we watched. Think back to what order these cards are supposed to be in. And then um, look at your cards and get them back in that order as fast as possible. Okay. So I'm going to count. Count down three, two, one, go. And then I'll sit here and I'll count down 10, 9, 8, 7, all the way down to 1. And when I get to 1, hopefully your cards are in the correct order, okay? So here's our countdown. Ready? 3, 2, 1, go. 10, 9, 8, 7, you got this. 6, 5, almost there. 4, 3, 2, one stop did you get them in order yet are you confident that you got them in the right order hmm let's check and see how y'all did ready our first part of the gospel says god rules it should be your picture with a crown the second part of the gospel says we sin you should be looking for that big red x the third part of the gospel says god provided look for that cross the fourth part of the gospel says Jesus gives, and you've got this big present right here. And the fifth and final part of the gospel says we respond with our two arms up in the air. How did you guys do? Did you get them in the right order? Was 10 seconds enough or did you need more time? Hopefully you guys have worked on your memorization over these past couple weeks and hopefully you guys got it in the right order. All right, friends, so let's review a little bit more. Last week, we learned about the fifth and final point of the gospel that says we respond. We learned that placing your faith in Jesus is the only way to be saved and to erase that separation that's between us and God because of our sin. We read a story about Nicodemus who asked Jesus a lot of questions because he wanted to learn more about God's plan to save the world from sin. 
We also read a Bible verse from Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So today we're going to talk about what happens after someone becomes a Christian. So if you have your activity books with you, open up to page 56. All right, friends, on page 56 at the very top, it says the gospel and me. In that gray box underneath, let's read our key point for today. It says when we grasp the gospel, we discover God rules, we sinned, God provided, Jesus gives, and we respond. These gospel truths are personal, life-changing, and can make us a new creation. Everybody say 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Let's look at this key verse of ours today from 2 Corinthians. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and see, the new has come. Before we read our Bible story today, let's play another review game using the same cards that we just used for our last game. So what's going to happen is I'm going to read to you some statements, some different things that we've learned over these past couple weeks in all of these videos. And so I want you to lay each of the cards out in front of you face up. You can see every single card. And so when I read one of these statements, I want you to hold up the card um, that represents that part of the gospel, the part of the gospel that I'm describing. So you're going to have to think real hard back to each of these videos and listen really carefully to what I say and try and figure out which part of the gospel it goes to. All right, are you guys ready? All right, number one, when we grasp the gospel, we discover that Jesus gave up his perfect life and died on the cross to pay for our sins. Which part of the gospel was that from? Think about it for just a second. And I'm gonna show you with my cards the answer. Ready? Jesus gives. All right, hopefully you got that answer right. If not, we've got lots more for you to keep um, trying to figure out. God cannot ignore and must punish sin. Think about it for a second. Which week did we talk about that? Think about it for a second and I'm about to show you the right answer. Are you ready? We sinned. Did you guys get that one correct? Here's our next one. When we grasp the gospel, we discover that God created everything through Jesus and for Jesus. God is creator and he loves us. Think about it for a couple seconds. What week did we talk about that? I'm going to show you the answer here in a second. Are you ready? God rules. We talked about that the very first week, the very first video in this series. Okay, here's our next one. This is a Bible verse. This is one of our key verses. Romans 10 9 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I may or may not have read that verse at the very beginning of this video meaning it must have been recent. So it must have come from our last video where we talked about how we respond. Okay, you guys are doing awesome. Let's keep going. The next one says, mercy is when we don't get what we deserve. Do you remember the week that we talked about mercy? Which week was that? Which part of the gospel did we talk about mercy? it for just a second. The correct answer is Jesus gives. Remember we talked about how Jesus gives us mercy when he gives us forgiveness of our sin because we don't deserve forgiveness of our sin, do we? All right, next one. This is a short statement, but I think it's pretty easy. I think you'll get it. The next statement. When did we learn about how God is creator? is creator. What week would we have talked about that? That one's an easy one. The week, the very first week when we talked about how God rules. All right. Here's the next one. When we grasp the gospel, we discover that we are sinners and our sin separates us from God. Which one of these parts of the gospel 
would that statement fall under? What week would we have talked about that? I think this one's pretty easy too. The answer is we sinned. We talked about that the second week of our gospel series. Okay. The next one is God provides a solution to our sin problem. Which week did we talk about that? Our sin problem, how God provides a solution. Hold up your card and show me what do you think the answer is? God provided week three, the picture of the cross. Okay. We've got a couple left, okay? The next one says, we can be welcomed into God's family by believing in our hearts that Jesus saved us by what he has already done on the cross. What week did we talk about that, about becoming part of God's family by believing in what Jesus did on the cross? Think about it for a second. Hold up your cards for me. We talked about that last week. We talked about how we respond, how we can respond to the gift that Jesus has given us. Respond in faith, okay? The next one says, Jesus gives us living water, the Holy Spirit. Do you remember we talked about the story of the woman at the well and how she wanted an actual drink of water, but Jesus had living water to give her? Which part of the gospel does that go with? Think about it for just another second. And the answer is God provided. All right, friends, I'll finish. How did you guys do? Hopefully both of those review games helped you to remember all the things that we've learned these past couple weeks. You were able to put those cards in order and those statements. You remembered which week we talked about which part of the gospel and hopefully that's just all in your memory. Next, we're going to read our Bible story. Today, we're going to be talking about Paul's conversion and baptism. So open your books to page 59 and everybody say Acts chapter 9. Verse 1 through 25. All right, friends, if you look on page 59 in your books, you can read the story along with me. Okay, here we go. After Jesus died, rose from the dead, and ascended to heaven, everybody say, oh yeah. People in Jerusalem who believed in Jesus were persecuted or treated cruelly because of their faith. One of Jesus' followers, Stephen, was even killed. Everybody give me a sad face. A man named Saul had been there when Stephen was killed. Saul wanted to put an end to the church. Everybody say, uh-oh. He went into the believers' homes, dragged them out, and put them into jail. Many believers fled the city. Saul headed to Damascus to arrest believers there, but on the way, a bright light shone from heaven, suddenly flashing all around him. Saul fell to the ground. He heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord Saul asked. I am Jesus, he replied. Get up and go into the city. Then you will be told what you must do. Saul got up and opened his eyes, but he couldn't see. Everybody cover your eyes like this. All right, you're going to keep your eyes closed until I say no peeking. Okay. Saul got up, opened his eyes, but he couldn't see. So the men who were traveling with Saul led him by the hand into Damascus. Ananias, a disciple of Jesus, lived in Damascus. The Lord spoke to Ananias in a vision. He told him to go to the house where Saul was staying. Do you still have your eyes closed? Hmm. I need to check on some of y'all. Keep those eyes closed. Ananias knew that Saul had hurt many believers in Jerusalem and that he arrested anyone who believed in Jesus. But the Lord said, go, I have chosen this man to take my name to the Gentiles, kings and the Israelites. So even though Saul had done some bad things, God still had a plan to use him for good. Ananias obeyed the Lord. He found Saul and told Saul that Jesus had sent him to help. Ananias put his hands on Saul and suddenly Saul could see again. On the count of three, everybody open your eyes. Ready? One, two, three. Saul got up and he was baptized. 
Do y'all know what baptism is? You guys might have seen this at church on Sunday, or maybe you've seen a video of this. Baptism is where someone stands in a pool of water, they get dunked underneath the water, and then they come right back up. Okay, and so why do we do this at church? What is baptism even for? Is it just something fun to do to kind of play in the water for a second? Baptism is actually something really important in a Christian's walk, in their faith. Baptism is a way for us to remember what Jesus did on the cross, okay? So we know the story of Jesus dying on the cross. Okay, remember he hung on that cross. He was buried in the ground, and then three days later, he rose back to life. Now, does Jesus dying on the cross, being buried, and then coming back to life look kind of sort of like what I described baptism is, where you stand in the water, you get dunked in the water, and then you come back up? It looks very, very similar. And so guys, when someone gets baptized, their act of standing in that water, being dunked and coming back up is a reminder to anyone watching, anyone around of what Jesus did when he died on the cross, was buried and rose three days later. And so did you know that Jesus was baptized? Yeah. Jesus was baptized, and it's a way for Christians to share their faith, to just be so excited and to share with everybody that they believe in Jesus, that they have been forgiven of their sins and that they're a new creation. And so after Saul's encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, he became a Christian. He was so excited and he was baptized so that he could share his faith. He could share what Jesus did in his life. So let's keep reading our story, see what happens. For the next few days, Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus. He began to go to the synagogues and to preach about Jesus. Saul told the people, Jesus is the son of God. He believed, didn't he? The people were amazed. They recognized Saul and knew that he had wanted to put an end to the church and to all the believers. Now he was one of them. The Jews did not like Saul's message, and so they planned to kill him. Saul heard what the Jews wanted to do, so one night he left the city. The disciples helped Saul escape by lowering him down the city wall in a basket. Now, the Bible tells us that after this story, after this real event that happened, that Saul's name was actually changed to Paul. So have you heard stories about Paul in the Bible? Have you read about Paul? Paul wrote 13 books of the Bible. So that day on Damascus was a huge day for him. He went from being someone who wanted to kill Christians to someone who loved Jesus, who preached about Jesus, and wrote 13 of the books that we have in our Bible. Everybody say, whoa, whoa, we will. So his name was changed to Paul so that he could remember that amazing day in his life where everything changed. So we've been talking so much about the gospel these past couple weeks and about how to become a Christian, about baptism, and we just read that amazing story about how Saul turned into Paul, how his life completely changed when he started believing in Jesus. So I thought it'd be kind of fun if I shared with you my testimony so that you guys can get to know me a little bit better. Do you guys know what a testimony is? A testimony is a person's story about how they became a Christian and the story about what God has done in their life. And so many of you have a testimony and you might not have even known it. So here's my testimony. I used to go to church as a little girl with my grandparents and my aunt, and church was just my favorite thing in the whole world. I went to church every Wednesday and Sunday, and I was in all the musicals and the Christmas pageants, and I went to all the different summer camps, all the VBSs. Like, I just loved church. I loved my friends there. I loved learning about Jesus and reading my Bible. When I was 10 years old, so I was in fifth grade, when I was 10 years old, I decided that I wanted to become a Christian. And so I talked to my children's director about it, and I prayed that prayer, um, confessing my sin and asking Jesus to forgive me. And I told Jesus that I wanted to have a relationship with him, that I wanted to become a Christian. 
And so that was the day that I was saved. Now, shortly after that day, that really important day in my life, my parents got a divorce and they decided they didn't want to be married anymore. And so we moved to a new city. And so in that new city, I didn't live by my grandparents and my aunt anymore. My mom and my dad didn't really ever go to church. And so that meant that I didn't have a way to get to church. And so throughout middle school and high school, I didn't go to church very often. If I went down to spend the weekend at my grandparents' house, I'd go to church with them. Or after I turned 16 and I could drive a car myself, whoa, I would go to church sometimes on a Sunday, but it was really scary for me to walk into a church all by myself without anybody with me. And so I just didn't go to church very much in middle school and high school. So even though I wasn't going to church very often anymore, I still believed in Jesus. I still believed that he had died on the cross and I still had that relationship with him. Um, I would read my Bible and I would pray and talk to God. And, um, but I just, I really, really miss church. Well, then when I went to college, I went to Florida State, go Knowles, had to fit that somewhere into a video. So I went to Florida State and my very first year of college, I just was really sad. I really wanted to go to church, but like I said a couple seconds ago, like it's kind of scary to walk into a church by yourself. And so I was just too nervous to go. And then um, come my second year of college, my best friend invited me to go to church with her. And I was so excited. I could not wait. And so I remember the very first day going to church with her, I was super nervous and my stomach kind of hurt, but I walked into church with her and I knew as soon as I walked in that this is where I wanted to be. I wanted to be at church and I had missed it so much and I just was so excited because it felt so familiar. And so I started going to church with her and in college, I started studying my Bible like never before and I was just so excited to learn and I went to classes, I went to church every Sunday, I was in different Bible studies and um, I just love to sing, I'm a musician so I was so excited to just be able to worship again and I just, I loved going to church at college. Well, um, while I was at that church, I learned about what baptism was. And I thought, well, hey, I've never been baptized. I'm a Christian. Like, I believe in Jesus and I've prayed that prayer before, but I've never taken this next step of baptism. And so I went and I talked to my senior pastor about it. His name is Brother Rich. And so um, one day um, I went up in front of the whole entire church and I was baptized. It was such an exciting day. Again, I was really nervous in my stomach hurt, but it was so exciting. So instead of just telling you about my baptism, I thought I would show you because I actually have a video of my baptism. I thought it would be kind of fun to just show that to you guys. So I'm going to play it for you here. Ready? This is Chrissy Morse. She's come sharing with us that she's given her heart and life to Jesus. Uh, and she requested scriptural baptism and church membership. Chrissy, is it your testimony to us today that Jesus lives in your heart and it's your heart's desire to live for him? Chrissy, upon your public profession of your faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and in obedience unto his command, I baptize you, my sister in Christ, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mary with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in you Yay! I'm so excited that we got to watch that video. Um, I actually haven't watched that video in a couple years, and so when I thought about the idea to show you guys the video, I was, I was like, Wow, I really haven't seen that in a long time. Let me rewatch it. Let me remember that day. So kind of like in our story today, how Saul's name was changed to Paul so that he would always remember, you know, the life change that he had and what God did in his, in his life. That day of baptism for me, for me to be able to watch that video again, it reminds me of what Jesus did in the day that I, um, at 10 years old, became a Christian. But it also reminds me of that day um, in college when I was baptized and, you know, just what God was doing in my life. And 
Um, it's so cool to be able to remember those things and to have a testimony. Well, today, after reading Paul's story and then hearing my story, I want to invite you to think about what your next step is. So last week, we had a time at the end of our video where we had a time of invitation. And this is a quiet time where we invite you to talk to God about what's going on in your heart and in your mind. And if you were ready to pray that prayer and to put um, your faith in Jesus to become a Christian, then we gave you some time to do that and we helped you to pray that prayer. Um, and so if you didn't pray that prayer last week, but you're ready this week, then that's amazing. You can pray that prayer anytime you're ready. So you can go find your mom and dad and ask them to sit and pray with you. Um, if you didn't watch the video last week, you could watch that video. And at the end, I say a prayer and you can say that prayer with me and you can make that decision. You can become a Christian. Um, if you are a Christian, but you haven't been baptized yet, then maybe your next step is to talk to mom and dad and tell them that you're ready for baptism. Um, they can contact me and then we all can have a conversation about it and we can start the process. We can schedule a day for you to be baptized. Maybe your next step is to commit to reading the Bible more. If so, that's awesome. Take a few minutes each day and spend some, some alone time with God and read your Bible. Maybe your next step is to commit to praying more. If so, that's awesome too. Um, you can take a few minutes each day to spend some time alone with God to talk to Him. You can confess your sin and ask for forgiveness. You can pray for friends and family. You can ask God to help you with things. That would be an awesome next step. Maybe your next step is to work on something you're struggling with. Maybe you want to stop fighting with your siblings. Maybe you want to do a better job of listening to instructions. Or maybe you want to stop to start worrying about things less. I know that I worry about things a lot. And I, I ask God to help me with that. And so pray to God and ask him to help you with these decisions, with these things that you want to do to be better. Um, whatever your decision is today, I am proud of you, and I hope that you will make a decision about what your next step of faith could be. And um, just know that I'm praying for you in that. And um, let's just take a couple minutes here to be silent together and to talk to God about our decisions. So um, I'm going to bow my head here. I'm going to be praying for you guys, and I hope that you'll take some time to pray and just talk to God about whatever's on your heart and your mind. And um, then you'll hear me pray a prayer at the end for all of us together okay so let's just take some quiet time together here now you ready God, I just thank you so much for my sweet friends who are watching this video. Lord, we have studied the Bible together these past couple weeks. Lord, we've learned about the gospel, and we're just so thankful for you sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for us. And God, thank you that you've allowed us to study this together. And Lord, I know that so many of my friends have decisions that they want to make. Some of them are going to decide to put their faith in you, God, to ask for your forgiveness. And Lord, they will be a new creature. Creation. The old will pass away, their sin and that separation between you and them will be erased. And God, we just want to celebrate with them because what an exciting decision that is. God, some of my friends here want to be baptism and um, to get baptized. And I just thank you for that decision, Lord, that they want to take the next step of faith and that they want to show all of their friends and family, all of um, their church family, that they believe in you, that they've made a decision to follow after you. And um, Lord, we're so excited for that decision. God, some of other friends of mine here, they want to commit to reading their Bible more or praying more. And Lord, we know that as we read the Bible and as we pray that we get to know you even better. God, that we grow closer in our relationship with you. And Lord, we as Christians want to do that each and every day. Lord, help us to all be better at that. And Lord, I'm just so proud of my friends that want to make that commitment. And Lord, we have some, um, all of us actually have some things that we want to be better at, Lord. 
Lord. We're all sinners. Even after we've become Christians, we still sin. We still make bad choices. And so, Lord, there are things that all of us need to do to become better, to follow after you, to um, maybe be nicer to our siblings, to listen and obey more, God, to worry less. Lord, there's so many things. God, I just pray that you'll be with each and every one of us and help us to um, make that commitment and that decision. And Lord, help us to do better, to follow after you. God, we just love you so much. Thank you for each and every friend here. God, thank you for, again, the message of the gospel and that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for us so that our sin could be forgiven, Lord. We're amazed that um, even though he died on that cross and was buried, Lord, that you raised him up three days later. God, you are a miracle worker. Lord, we just, again, we love you so much and thank you for all that you do. In your precious name I pray, amen. All right, my friends, if you made one of those decisions today, then I would love to hear about it. At the end of this video, I'm going to put my contact information on the screen. And if you want to share with me what you decided, um, I would just be, I would be so excited to hear it. So ask your mom and dad to help you contact me and um, just know that I'm praying for you and for these decisions, for these next steps that you're going to take. When this video ends, make sure that you flip in your activity book to page 58 and 59 and do the um, activity that goes along with our video today. And then you've got five of those daily devotions to do. So take that alone time with God each and every day and do some of those really fun activities with the games and puzzles and things. And um, just remember all the things that we've learned. And guys, this series has been so, so fun. So it's been a weird season where we're watching lots of videos instead of being able to gather at church together. And we've done lots of fun things and random things and weird things but we've had some awesome um, videos but guys these gospel videos have been my favorite and so I'm so excited that you watch them if you missed any of them feel free to go back and watch them and um, they'll be up on the website and on YouTube for a while they're not gonna disappear so you can always go back and do them or watch any of the other videos that we've done so um, guys I love you and I miss you and I hope that you had fun watching our video today and I will see you guys later.